G'day guys, you're back with Miracle Max. Today I'm working on a Volkswagen Golf Mark 6 1.4 litre 2010 model. So what I've been doing on it so far is a heap of work. I've done a timing chain on it, full complete service. I've gone through the service and warranty book only to find that the previous mechanics haven't done their job properly. In this case, they've never replaced the fuel filter. So that's what we're gonna to do today. If you happen to be vaguely interested, there's the Ryko part number right there. Um, I only got that because that's all that was available. Dear little sucker, I must admit. And it should look something like this. There's your Ryko part number. This is your inlet side and your outlet side. And of course, it's got that flow arrow on it. So make sure you face it the right direction. It'd be pretty hard to get it wrong, I imagine. You've got two pipes on this side and one on the other side. So face it the right direction, follow the flow. So to find the inline filter, we go down to the uh, driver's side uh, rear door, follow down behind that, and hopefully it should be there. Surprise! There it is. Okay, and looks like we might even have the correct filter. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? So as you can see, we've got two inlets there, and an outlet on that side, and that is the direction of the arrow. Nice. At least we've got something right, hey? In theory, we should get rid of the pressure that's built up in the line. Now, I've had this sitting for quite some time without starting it, so the pressure, no doubt, has bled away. On this side of things, it's only low pressure, of course, um, but it's going to spray anyway, so make sure you've got yourself a good little container of some description. That's my container. <laughs> yeah, not helpful, Max. Um, so I've just got that under, under there to capture any stuff. Now, these two uh, inlet ones here have sort of kind of, sort of kind of, like a button. So you press that button up and you wiggle and you jiggle and in theory it should in fact come off like DOS. Okay, so not too hard to do and capture all my dribblage. There we go, one side and you probably want to note that this blue one here is on the center uh, inlet um, pipe, I guess you could say. This black uh, button here is on the outside one. So a good suggestion is to push on the connector itself and then press the button in and then in fact give it a wiggle and a jiggle and it should in fact come off. That's my theory anyway. Let's give that a burl, shall we? Nice. Okay, there we go. I'll let that dribble just for a sec so that I can shift the camera to the other side. Now the other side is just a little bit different because the button <laughs> Thanks, VW, is on the top. A little bit harder to get to. As I mentioned, good old VW, I've turned this thing upside down. So the button that you press, yeah, that's right, it's on the top here. What I suggest you use is like a hooky type thing. This is my hooky type thing. Come on, there we go. A little hooky thing. Believe it or not, it's actually a uh, light knob or something like that that I made up years ago. You could use a scribe that's got a hooky thing on the end. That would be useful. Let's just push down on that button. I'll try from the other side here. Now keep in mind, you want to push in on that uh, pipe or connector as well. We'll call it a pipe, shall we? Wiggle jiggle. And maybe I can't get it down. Don't force it too much, guys. You don't want to damage it. So I'm just going to turn it a fraction like that. Push in with my pipe like that, push down on my button, and ah, oh, oh, it's all to do with the wigglage jigglage movement. Capture any petrol, it may come out. There we go, shouldn't be an issue. There's a Phillips head screw over this side here. It's a plastic looking clamp by the looks of things, so I'll have to be careful that I don't break it. Phillips head screw right here. So there we go, not too bad, it's a bit dirty under here. Obviously been out in the country somewhere, but uh, the joys of being an uh, automotive technician, hey? Yeah, sure. Just get covered in dirt and stuff all the time. Never mind. Ooh, the drippage. There we go. That's why we have the tray there, folks. Get one. Ah, get him out. On the new one, there's a little pin here, as you can see, and that is a locator. So there's a plastic clip around there, 
and you've got to push that out of that to actually force it out. So I won't show you on camera because it's a little bit difficult to show you. But yes, that's the locator, so there's a plastic clip around that. Watch out for it, guys. Cobwebs and dirt. and These are a few of my unfavourite things. So I should now come out. Come on, fella. Ah, oh, that locator's in the road still. I just have to push it, the whole plastic assembly back a little bit past that locator. That's the fella that's given us the grief at the moment. Ah, stupid design. And of course, to put him back on, we just simply slide him back into place. Fingers crossed. Don't forget that little locator, of course, guys. That's got to be put in. I might put this connector on here first. Once it's in, just give it a wiggle and pull it backwards to make sure that it doesn't come out. I'm happy with that. And of course, remember that little locator that we've got to put into place, so that'll wiggle around there. I might just get some more lightage on there. Yep, that little pin is now located in its little house, I believe. Yes, it is. Okay, centre one. Whoops, you idiot, Max. Got to pull your blanking covers off. Get little plugs. Always keep these, guys. These are really, really good to keep. Um, they're always good to use for some other um, reason to cover other things. As I said, the blue one goes in the middle. Click. Click. Phillips head in here. Job should be done. Yep, happy with those. Give it a good wipe off and then we'll check it after we've uh, run it for a little while to make sure that there's no leakage there. But they look all okay to me, I believe. Is this one okay? Yep, I think so. Good. Once you've got the filter replaced, I like to have a look at the old one and make sure that the filter was doing its job properly and also how long it's been since it was done. Now, here is our outlet. As mentioned, that goes out. So we want to face it the opposite direction and face it down like that and see what sort of fuel. Now, keep in mind that most of it has been gone, um, but some will still come out, of course. Just enough for us to examine the quality of the fuel. And I can tell you right now, it's pretty filthy. That should be enough to have a look at anyway. Um, can you see that? So that's an indication, obviously, that the filter has never been replaced. Um, you know, the mechanics previously haven't done their job properly because you're meant to replace these every 60,000 Ks and it hasn't been done and it's up to 100 and something thousand Ks. So make sure you do your maintenance regularly, guys. Do your filter properly. You make a bit of coin on the side, but at the same time, you do the right thing by the customer. If you listen carefully, you can hear that there's an in-tank pump now, if you prime it often enough, just have a listen. <laughs> Don't worry about the stupid headlight things. So, <laughs> despite the headlight alignment, you can hear the pump in the background. Now, I'm not sure if it's going to work or not. Some of these need to be uh, primed. Uh, using a scan tool, but we'll give it a shot just to see if it's going to work for you DIY guys at home. So I'm going to give it about five primes and see if we can hear it come through. Yeah, well the pump sounds like it's working okay. Now I've got to get in there and put my foot on the clutch of course. Good on your Volksy. Okay, so it started up. This thing, for some reason, is running a little bit rough at idle just when it initially starts up, but uh, soon smooths out. So the important thing now is to let it run for a little while and then double check and make sure that we have no leaks at the fuel filter that we've just replaced. Don't know about you guys, but to me, it doesn't look like there's any leaks. None over there, none over there. All good. Yep, no problemos. Time to button it up, tidy it up, clean it up, and then ship it. All right, I'm going to stop you right there for a sec, Max. Those of you who are keen-eyed probably noticed that I screwed up. 
If you have a really close look at the video, you can see that I didn't actually click in this particular section or this particular pipe onto the outlet hose. Now you could see me struggling there, pushing it on, pushing it on, but I didn't actually click it into place. This little ridge here is where the connector goes on and the clip goes on the opposite side of that. Now if you look on the video, I haven't got it all the way on. Even though I struggled and pushed and I thought that I had, it did not click into place. Needless to say, two days later, the customer rang up and said, hey, I've got some fuel smell happening and also there's a bit of a puddle in the driveway. I got her to bring it back to the workshop and simply pushed it in a little further. Click, that audible click took place. Check for leaks, it was all good. I thought I'd double check my work. I thought I'd triple check my work, but hey, I got it wrong. But just know that when it came back to the workshop the second time, my OCD kicked in and I checked and checked and checked and checked and probably checked again, I guess. There were no leaks. I took it for a road test. It was all good. So just remember, guys, we all make mistakes. Double check your work. So there you go, guys. You now know how to put a fuel filter in a Volkswagen Golf Mark 6 2010 model 1.4 litre. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, give it a like, and feel free to comment down below. Of course, don't forget about that notification bell. You don't want to miss any future videos. I better finish this off, guys. So until next time, this is Miracle Max signing off. I will catch you later.